Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to cover function components in React. As the basis for this explanation, I'm going to be using this very simple React application. You can see over here in the HTML file, I have a pair of header tags with a title and a pair of body tags with a div that has the ID root. In addition to that, I have a JavaScript index.javascript file. And over here, I've simply imported React and React DOM. So to create a function component, we start off with a keyword function and we need to give our function a name and make sure that it starts with a capital letter. Otherwise you will run into problems. So I'm going to write func component and a pair of round brackets followed by a pair of curly brackets. Now in these curly brackets, I'm going to return something that looks like HTML code, but it is actually something you call JSX code. So make sure to distinguish between the two. So I'm going to be returning these pair of H1 tags and within them, I'm going to write, hello, I'm, I'm Max. There we go. Now we've created this function component but the next thing we need to do is we need to render it within our browser. So we can do that by writing constant root and setting that equal to react dom dot create root. And within brackets, we need to refer to the element within which we want to write this header. So if we have a look at our index.html file, you can see that I have this pair of div tags that have the ID root. And that is why I can write document dot get element by ID. And within brackets, I'm then going to write root because after all, that is the ID of the element that we're trying to access. And after that, we simply write root dot render and within brackets, I can then call the function component that I just created. And I can do that in one of two ways. So the first way that I can call this component is by using brackets. So I'm going to write func component and then save this. And once I open this up in the browser, you will see that it will say, hello, I'm Max. So let me go ahead and open the integrated terminal and then npm start to start the react app and in a second or two the browser should open and it will say hello i'm max so this works perfectly fine there's one more thing i want to show you which is in the inspector you can see that over here if we inspect the html code you can see that the hello i'm max text is exactly located within the div tag that has the id root so this is exactly the result that we receive from this line of code over here. The next thing that I want to show you is the second way of how we can call this function component because we can also use the smaller than sign and at the end, the greater than sign and insert a slash over here. So if I go ahead and save this and now reopen the browser, you can see that the result has not changed. So the result has stayed identical. And just to prove to you guys that it still works, I'm going to change my name to Felix and save this again. And you can see in the browser, it now says, hello, I'm Felix, and it still works perfectly fine. Now let's say that you want to add some arguments to this. You want to pass in something into the functional component that is then put into the text. So how would we go about passing in arguments. So let me show you the first way because there's two ways again. Let's go back to the rounded brackets and I am going to insert the name David. And then we have to, well, take care of this argument that we're passing into the call over here by writing something within these brackets. Specifically, we're going to write props. Now it doesn't matter whatever you write in here, but props is the convention. You usually use the word props. Then I'm going to pass in a pair of curly brackets over here and write props. And then if I go ahead and open up the browser window again, you can see that the name is now hello, I'm David, because the name is being passed through the function call into the function itself and then being put into this placeholder props over here. 
And I can show you that regardless whatever name we use over here. So if we were to simply write name, it would still work. So you can see that if I refresh the browser window, it still works just the same. And the second way of calling uh, or of passing in an argument of the function is the following way. So you could instead go back to the smaller than sign followed by the greater than sign. And let's go ahead and delete this one. And then you simply pass in the name as a property. So we're going to write name is equal to uh, David. And within the function component, we can now write something like props. And then when we want to access this property, we can write props dot name because after all this property has the name name now if i go ahead and save this again and open up the browser you can see it says hello i'm david let's try this with a number another example and let's for example go back to max and save this you can see that now it says max so this works just as fine and that's the two methods of how you can pass in arguments into the function calls. The last thing that I want to show you is that you can also put your function into separate files. So if I go ahead and create a new file, I'm going to call this component.js and I'm going to copy over the function component that I just created a moment ago. So I'm going to copy it over in here. Now to make this function component accessible to the other files that I've created, specifically the index.js file, I need to export this. So I'm going to write export and then default. And then I need to write the name of the function that I'm exporting, which is func component. Let me copy and paste this. There we go. Then within the index.js file, I need to import this function. So I'm going to write import func component from dot slash component dot js and I need to make sure that I add a semicolon and save this and I also need to make sure to save this file and once both of these files are saved and I go back into the browser and refresh it you can see the result stays the same and just to prove to you guys that this really works I'm going to write the name Jess in here save it again and now the name has switched to Jess. So you can clearly see that even though the function component called func component is not in the same file as the index.js file but instead it's in the in components.js file it still remains accessible by the fact that we have imported it from the components.js file. Alright I hope this video helped you out and we'll see each other in the next one.